Hello, my name is Sarah Peterson, and I'm the assistant principal for elementary at ISA. For those of you who don't know me, and nice to meet you. I put together this little video at the suggestion of our head of school, Greg Hughes, to discuss with you about our COVID clinic protocols. Before we begin, I just want to thank Mr. Hughes. I'd like to thank our principals, Ms. Julie Cox and Mr. Warren Needham, as well as the faculty and students that you see in this video. And special thanks to our nurses who are right now making this protocol a lived reality um, and stepping in in cases of emergency as only essential workers can. That said, I hope you enjoy. To begin, I'd like to share that ISA's first line of defense is our families. It's you, our parents. And so we ask that you please keep your child at home. If they show signs of illness, if they've been exposed to anyone who has tested positive for COVID or exhibiting COVID symptoms, or if they have traveled overseas within the past 14 days. Once students arrive at school, we have regular temperature checks at the gate, we are implementing mask wearing, and we have regular hygiene and cleaning protocols. However, we still recognize that as a new disease, there may still yet be a need for additional screening and safety measures when it comes to COVID-19. We have put these protocol into place to address what happens when a child previously screened becomes ill at school. This is Ava. Now, Ava arrived at ISA this morning feeling fine. She was wearing her mask, her temperature was checked, and she washed her hands before entering. Unfortunately, in Mr. Floro's English class, Ava begins to feel sick. She puts her head down and Mr. Flora notices that she doesn't seem to be feeling well. He asks her if she's okay. When she tells him no and that she's feeling sick, he asks her to go ahead and step outside while he WhatsApps the main office for the high school to notify them that a student needs to be escorted to the waiting room. Ms. Juliet, after having received Mr. Floro's text, comes to collect Ava and escorts her directly to the waiting room. Upon arriving at the waiting room, Nurse Omo takes Ava's temperature and invites her inside. I have mentioned the waiting room a few times already, and I think the question that some of you may be wondering is why we have a separate area for students who are experiencing symptoms of illness um, rather than the clinic. Why don't students who are sick just go directly to the clinic? The reason is, is that the clinic is now a place where students who are healthy go to for minor concerns and things that are not symptoms or suspicions of illness. As you can see here, COVID-19 is a really tricky illness. The symptoms for COVID-19 vary and they mimic many other illnesses that are common here and across the world. Symptoms include headaches, difficulty breathing, a runny nose, abdominal pain, sore throat, shivering or chills, body pain, and fatigue and tenderness, as well as a telltale sign, which is sudden loss of taste and smell. As a result, we really do not want any children who are exhibiting symptoms or signs of illness, potentially coming into contact with other students who may need access to the clinic for a band-aid or assistance with medication or something that otherwise is not illness. So just to recap, students who are showing signs of illness, such as persistent cough, runny nose, vomiting or diarrhea, head, body ache, and fatigue, 
any sign of illness really, they are escorted to the waiting room to be assessed by the nurses and to have contact tracing protocols implemented. Students who do not show signs of illness, such as having a scrape or a cut, mosquito bites, assistance with daily medication, they may continue to report to the clinic. Okay, back to Ava. Nurse Omo asks Ava a series of questions about her symptoms, their timing, any other recent illnesses in order to assess Ava's illness and the risk for potential exposure to COVID-19. Take note of Nurse Omo's hygiene precautions and her PPE or personal protective equipment. Nurse Omo uses her computer to complete the contact tracing protocol. Nurse Omo contacts Ava's administrator using WhatsApp. She discusses the symptoms and her findings in friendly language and has the administrator talk to Ava directly to assess how she's doing. Hello, Ms. Cox. This is Sarah Peterson calling from ISA. I'm afraid I'm calling about Ava. Upon Ava's mom's arrival, the other nurse on duty comes to collect Ava and escort her to the gate. And our custodial crew is on hand to assist with cleaning and sanitizing. As the nurse escorts Ava through the gate, her mom is waiting outside for her. The nurse assures both of them that their principal will be speaking with them again that very evening to see how Ava is doing and to follow up with any questions. Now, if Ava is determined to need testing and tests negative, she will need to remain home for three days after her symptoms have subsided in order to ensure that she will not make anyone else sick upon her return to school. If she tests positive, she'll be encouraged to participate in distance learning for 14 days after her symptoms have subsided and return with a negative test. Thank you.